What is up guys? It's your boy Rick Kakis and today we've got some brand spanking new Destiny 2 news, courtesy of the Bungie weekly update that has just gone live, revealing official information. And so, let's get started. Now, first things first, what's been going on this week with Destiny 2? Well, a few things. Notably, Bungie recently released a new teaser trailer for the upcoming season of The Wish. Here it is, right here. All wishes come at a cost. All right, that's pretty cool. Now, moving on from there, something else that happened earlier in the week was that the nominations for this year's Game Awards event were unveiled. And as you can see, Destiny 2 was actually nominated for Best Community Support. This is absolutely crazy. First of all, because community support has been notoriously lacking, even by Bungie's own admission. And as a result, of course, Destiny players were clowning on this announcement. Announcement. But it wasn't just the players. Another important thing, and just what makes this announcement so much more crazy, is that the community team was among the most affected by the Bungie layoffs. So everyone was saying this is going to be the most awkward acceptance speech in history when the last remaining guy from the community team goes up at Bungie and says, shout out to my colleagues who all no longer work at the company. What a wild situation. And I did make a video uh, on all of the uh, devs and ex-devs that were talking about this on social media. Some pretty crazy insights, guys. So definitely check that out. Now, moving on from there, something else that happened around the same time was that a press release came out and as you can see right here, uh, it was talking initially about Season of the Wish, but at the bottom it talks about Season of the Wish is the final season for Destiny 2 before the Final Shape expansion launches on February 27th, 2024. Now, this caused a lot of speculation because it was reported around the time that the Bungie layoffs were reported that the final shape would be delayed all the way until June. So this most recent press release is seemingly refuting that, saying no, no, it's still coming out in February. However, if we look at this tweet here with Destiny Tracker saying this, you can see Jason Schreier in the replies, the person who originally reported the delay saying, don't get your hopes up. Now, for some context, Jason also was the first to report that the original Destiny game uh, was getting delayed. No one believed him and it wasn't announced until months later, but he was eventually right. So again, this guy's track record has been pretty darn good. And another thing that was super sleuthed out by Destiny Bulletin, as you can see right here, is that Bungie actually went in and added, and you can see like before there was nothing here, and then they went in and added dates and content subject to change. You know what I mean? So like, like why is Bungie doing that if it's still coming out February 27th. So I, I do still fully expect a delay, especially because Bungie released that statement saying that th they're apologizing for like lack of content. And they're saying we're, we're working hard to make Final Shape even better and, and we didn't have our best foot forward when we unveiled it. Like, why are they saying all that if it's still everything's going forward as normal? So again, I fully expect a delay still, but nothing official has come out yet. Now, moving on from there, guys, let's get into the brand new information within the 12. First of all, something very cool, a little bit of nostalgia for you guys, the Dragon's Breath is returning next season. So, Bungie says, from the flames emerges a classic, the Dragon's Breath exotic rocket launcher returns in Season of the Wishes seasonal reward track. So, it's gonna be the bat, like the season's pass reward. This exotic has been reimagined to sow mayhem around it. So, here's what it does. The intrinsic perk is burn the world and it says the fuel counter passively increases the longer you go without firing it to a maximum of times five. Firing dragon's breath then empties this counter transferring all fuel to the rocket. Rockets then embed themselves in struck targets causing scorch damage and periodically ejecting 
incendiary fuel into pools around the target that inflict scorched damage to anyone standing in them. The more fuel a rocket is fired with, the longer it lasts before detonating and the more fire it spreads. Then you have high octane as another exotic intrinsic perk saying, with this intrinsic, nearby ignitions instantly refill your dragon's breath with two fuel. Plus, when its fuel fully refills, it reloads itself. Once you've got this thing in hand, make sure to pay a visit to the gunsmith in the tower so you can get the quest for the exotic catalyst. Speaking of which, the exotic catalyst is called Pyromancer and this catalyst passively replenishes your dragon's breath's fuel faster. Eliminating combatants with this weapon cause them to spawn fire sprites too. Now, this just sounds crazy. Potentially, like, if you stick this rocket, I imagine, like, the main source of doing that would be on a boss, then it's just going to continuously damage and scorch them and spew out pools of increasing scorch. Like, I wonder how much damage it's going to do passively. And, like, can you stick them with one rocket with max fuel so it lasts for a long time, and then all your follow-up shots are just normal shots? Like, will you get that passive damage with the Scorch and then just normally shoot uh, all those rockets to do normal rocket launcher damage, which is obviously going to combine for quite a lot of potential damage? This just sounds really unique, and I can't wait to try it out next season. Now, moving on from there, we have a Season of the Wish Economy Rewards Tuning Pre- Preview. So, first of all, they have new rewards for lost sectors. Starting with Season of the Wish, we are introducing additional rewards for completing lost sectors without the assistance or comfort of a stalwart fire team, so while solo. While Gunsmith Engrams will be introduced as a reward for all difficulties of lost sectors, select Foundry weapons will also drop from Legend and Master completions. The weapons will drop at these rates, so Legend, 70% chance of dropping, Master, 100% chance of getting these. So, they say, Completions on Master difficulty will also have the advantage of weapons dropping with an additional perk in either the third or fourth column, which could help them uh, in chasing the perfect roll. The weapons available from Lost Sectors are grouped into several smaller pools to make chasing a particular weapon more feasible, and they'll rotate after each daily reset. The following weapons will be available from Lost Sectors during Season of the Wish. So, you have Day 1, Day 2, Day 3, day four and you can see that stuff right here now again remember earlier in uh, the year in the previous twab we did talk about how uh, there's also going to be gunsmith engrams that are going to be focusable as well so this is just going to really let you start to target farm all of those world drop weapons uh, that you may be missing the world drop loot pool is massive so this is absolutely going to help you actually get the god roll for the weapon you're looking for now, moving on from there, we have more ritual engrams coming. So they say the next update we have to share is about post-activity ritual rewards you can get from playing Vanguard Ops, Crucible, and Gambit. We know players want to get a hold of the newest weapons as soon as possible each season to try new strategies and builds. That's one of the reasons we made the newest ritual weapons available for engram focusing at their correspondent vendors from the word go. Next season, we are taking that a step further so players have more agency on the rewards they can get after a long play session in the ritual playlist. So at the start of next season, ritual activity completion rewards will now include additional drops of ritual engrams. This influx of engrams will let players focus more often for gear from seasons past and present. That said, with legendary shards going away soon, the ritual vendors will see the costs of focusing engrams slightly changed. To be clear, the increase in engram drops go hand in hand with these price changes. We are hoping you will still find yourself focusing just as often, albeit with a diff different set of circumstances. We have previously shared the new costs of ritual uh, vendor focusing, as well as tweaks to the number of rewards that activities such as Iron Banner and Trials are dropping. Here's a quick reminder of the new requirements so you can see them right here in a world without legendary shards. Make sure you're spending all your legendary shards before the start of next season, by the way. Moving on from there, guys. 
As you can see right here, Bungie joined forces with Team Rubicon to bring veteran awareness and recognition to the Destiny 2 community for the first time through the creation of the Jumpmaster emote. And all profits from that emote are going to be split with Team Rubicon and the Bungie Foundation. And this is going to be available until the end of season 22, which is this season. So if you wanna support that cause, you better get on that soon. Now, moving on from there, Bungie has a section on Iron Banner. It's currently ongoing and this is the last Iron Banner of the season. So if you want some rewards from it, you better get them now. And they also have a section on the leaving weapons, Dark Decider and the Gnora's Axe are going away. They won't be dropping anymore. You can still focus them. Uh, then the new weapon being added next season is the Lethal Abundance Strand High Impact Auto Rifle. And the returning weapon is the Reese Walker Kinetic Lightweight Shotgun, likely with a new perk pool as well. Now something very important here, guys, Bungie reveals the starting date for the next dungeon. So they say the new year six dungeon date is going to be scheduled to go live at 9 a.m pacific so reset on friday december 1st so mark your calendars and i will absolutely be going in there and getting out a dungeon guide as quickly as possible so make sure you're subscribed now moving on from there we have more prime gaming drops you can see them right here the playground ride exotic emote the sunderesh experiment 13r exotic ship the noble steed legendary sparrow and the prime exclusive legendary shader Ooh. and guys that is going to be it for the video hope you enjoyed and found this informative if you did please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video if you guys want to see more destiny 2 content so much of this don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button if you you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity the best way is to follow me on twitter at rick Kakis. that is linked in the description down below again i hope you enjoyed the video and as always have a good day